The year is 2020 and many bikes are now shipping with hydraulic disc brakes. Why in the world would you still want to use a cable actuated brake? Let's talk about it in this video. Welcome back Pathless Peddlers. And if you're new to the channel, if you're into the non-racing side of cycling, gravel exploring, riding party pace, you have found your people, hit that subscribe button. So one of the most frequently asked questions, frequently made comments is why on earth would you want to still spend money on cable brakes in 2020? Hydraulic brakes are more widely available. They're less expensive than they used to. Why would you still want to use a cable? So these are my four reasons why I still personally prefer cable actuated brakes and why you might want to consider them as well in 2020. So the first reason is stopping power. I know this sounds counterintuitive and yes, I will fully admit that hydraulic disc brakes wins this category on sheer stopping power alone, but that's not to say cable disc brakes don't stop your bike. In fact, most cable disc brakes I've used have the ability to lock up the wheel and really beyond that much stopping power, I don't know how much more you need. I think in particular in road riding situations and gravel road riding situations, cable disc brakes are more than adequate. Anything beyond that I think is honestly just filling this void of having to feel like you need more brake than you will actually ever use. And while I think absolute stopping power is definitely an important property, it's actually one of many different properties and should be the only one that you should focus on. So the second reason I still love cable actuated brakes is ease of maintenance and hackability. With cable brakes, a cable is a cable is a cable. Whereas with hydraulic brakes, depending on the brake manufacturer, you have to stock up on different kinds of fluids. And there are all these other compatibility issues. Do different calipers play well with different levers? With cable actuated brakes, it's pretty straightforward. Generally speaking, any road caliper will talk to any road lever. You can even get road brake calipers to talk with mountain bike levers with various kinds of pulleys or in the case of something like the Paul Clamper is just changing out the lever arm. Also, if you want to experiment with different kinds of gearing like the Advent X, one of the few mechanical systems that give us wide range gearing for drop bar bikes, there is no other uh, non hydraulic equivalent. For me on this channel, it's a real practical decision. I've changed the drivetrain on my Bombora about 10 times this year. And if I had to get a bleed kit or send the Bombora out to a shop every time I needed new hosing because I was trying different handlebars that were wider or narrower or trying a different drivetrain, would have cost me a small fortune. I could have had gold plated Paul clampers for that price. I think if you prioritize ease of maintenance, there is no black box. A cable is a cable is a cable. And if you don't want to wear gloves when you work on your bike or worry about spilling potentially toxic fluids and you live in a small apartment, then cables are still the way to go. On a more timely note, with COVID, bike shops across the country, across the world are totally backed up. So if you wanted to make a simple change on your bike or if you wanted to adjust your brake pads and you have hydraulic disc brakes and you don't want to deal with it, the wait time is going to be absurd. And even if you wanted to do it at home, bleed kits are actually hard to come by right now. Whereas a cable is a cable is a cable, readily available and easy to do. And personally for me, ease of maintenance and hackability is as important as pure stopping power. Another big reason I love cable actuated brakes is that they're pretty easy to adjust trail side. Let's say you have too much gap, you've been wearing down your pads, you can usually just twist a couple of adjuster knobs and you're good to go. You can bring up that slack and get that nice tight lever feel that you want. Whereas with hydraulic disc brakes, you know, once they go spongy, once there's too much of a pad gap, there's no real on the fly adjustment. You either have to put in a new pad or re-bleed it at home, but nothing so simple as a couple of twists on a barrel adjuster. I know for me, that was a bit of a surprise. I've had a couple of bikes with hydraulic disc brakes and the second it got spongy or the pad gap was too much, I was personally surprised to learn that there wasn't a simple way to take up that slack. Maybe there is, and I don't know about it. Let me know in the comments below. And lastly, the other reason I really prefer cable disc brakes is just this lack of existential doubt in things going wrong in the middle of nowhere. Again, if you're on a remote tour or let's say you're flying somewhere, you don't have to worry about hoses getting kinked and having to scramble to find the right braking fluid or a bike shop in a remote place that will have those specialized parts. Whereas with a cable actuated brake, generally speaking, most bike shops will carry brake cables and housing and you'll be able to fix it wherever you are. So again, this lack of existential doubt is just as important to me personally as absolute stopping power. 
Again, if it all depends on what you value. If you're a maximizer and just want the most stopping power per buck, then sure, hydraulic disc brakes. But if you value other things like ease of maintenance, hackability, lack of existential doubt, the, the ability to mix and match parts on the cheap without having to take it to a shop and spending loads of money, then cable actuated brakes still make sense in 2020 and even in the future. If you're watching this from 2050 YouTube, I'd probably still think the same thing. So that's what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you agree or are you all in on hydraulic? And if you like this video, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And as always, keep the supple side down.